Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today I am going to be using some of the Tim Holtz um, collage papers. Now, these are really, really gorgeous and fun to work with. And these are the three that I have. There are lots more in the collection as well. And these are absolutely beautiful. Honestly, I definitely would be happy to hoard these. <laughs> but I wanted to show you a different way that we are able to mix these together and also to create um, some envelopes and uh, things out of these tissue papers, these collage papers. Now I'm going to put down a mat first. This is the giant 18 by 24 uh, silicone scrapbook.com mat. I'm going to work with these two today because the other one has a bit of a tan uh, beige look to it and I'm not going to include that in today's one. So this one here is called the botanical collage paper, the flowers, the leaves, ah, it is so pretty. And this one here is called typeset. And again, this is more alphabet and numbers and script. And these are both stunning. Now, both of these pieces here are not quite big enough to cover the piece of printer paper that I have underneath. That is the, uh, I think it's eight and a half by 11 or 11 and a half ish. It doesn't really matter. I am just going to a collage a piece Piece of this onto my printer paper. Now I want pretty thin paper to begin with. You could get away with something a little bit thicker than printer paper but this is going to work fine. I'm using a very plain and simple glue stick today. If you want to you could use matte medium and water it down even a little bit would be perfect but to collage these two types together I have torn these up into pieces. Now, mainly I am tearing up the images, I would say, like I'm tearing an image off. Um, this, that's really the way that I tried to part them. You know, if there was a flower, I tried to keep it relatively whole. If there was a particular type of font or text or numbers, I tried to keep that uh, you know, pretty much whole, give or take. And I also don't like to make the pieces too small because that makes a lot of work. But it does mean that you can put these two together and it becomes this typeset and botanical collage piece and it looks like they were just made to go together. I absolutely love this. Now the reason I'm doing the collaging is because they are not wide enough uh, to create the envelopes that I need. I also need them to be stronger because this is essentially like a, a tissue kind of like a it's a, maybe a, a tiny bit stronger than tissue paper but it's essentially like a tissue paper um, with the gorgeous collage print on it so that's why I'm adding it onto another piece of the white cardstock you could by all means if you wanted to add some color underneath this first but I am happy with this black and white look here I've used my glue stick and made sure everything is nice and stuck down and things go over the edges at the minute but we are going to put this aside and keep going this will dry really, really fast, but while we're doing the other project, uh, we'll put it aside and it will dry. Now I have more pieces left over and I'm going to take a card front piece here because we are going to make a card and an envelope to go with it today. So I'm just using over the pieces that I had left over. I still have heaps and I still have more um, left over after this, but putting these little pieces together and I sort of audition them, hold them above, see if they fit or see if it's what you're after. I've got a tiny wee spot up the top there I still need to cover up, but apart from that, this was a really quick and not messy project. I do keep this mat in particular, the 24 by 18 inch one. I keep this for sort of messy projects as such. <laughs> and it means I can do the project and then I can shift it off my desk and away and let it dry. Now, I want to knock back the color of this a little bit because this is going to go on a card front. So I'm just adding a little bit of Dina Wakeley's white acrylic paint and I just have a little makeup sponge in my hands of which I'm just sponging it out. And this is just to knock back that design. I know this is a little bit sad because we all love that beautiful design, but in order for this to go on my card front, then I do need it to be a little bit in the background. Now this is the Lacy Edges die set here and I'm just going to take one of these. This is old, I, it might be still available, I'm not sure, but I absolutely love the delicate, beautiful edge that this is going to leave. You could use real lace if you had it or a trim or a ribbon or something like that. But I really wanted to incorporate the uh, collage paper into the card that it's going to go with the envelope made of the same thing. 
Um, so I have run that through my die cutting machine, holding it down with a little bit of mint tape and it gives a beautiful look. I had originally intended to use the whole piece, but actually this piece here is a leftover from the previous card that I created um, using a wet wipe technique, a baby wipes with acrylic paint. And so if you would like to see that video, I will have it linked at the end of this video and in the description box um, below this video as well. Now these beautiful little woodland creatures from Stamperia. I love these little die cuts and have used them in a few videos now. Um, so I'm sort of putting together how I want my card to go. Uh, this, this is apps, these little creatures. <laughs> they get me every time when I'm looking at them. I love the big tall mushrooms. I love the hedgehogs. I love that these have some different elements in them than the usual butterflies and birds. There are these little uh, like field mice. There's like this badger. I think it's a badger. Hedgehogs and there are a couple of birds as well. Uh, lots of lovely flowers and acorns and um, really cute. This one here that has the words at the top. If you had something across the top like a banner or something going across there um, you could use that and not have the words. Uh, these mushrooms. There's lots of mushrooms in this one. Lots of yeah woodlands things and I think that's really nice as a bit of a change of scenery for some cards. As I said, I've used this set before, so this is not the complete set that you get at all. I think I've made several cards using this one now. And I was wondering about whether to use these beautiful little hedgehogs, but sometimes I just need to make a decision and go with it because I very nearly did a little U-turn on the video and started off going making a whole lot of cards using these because all these little designs were popping into my mind. But I'm going to stick with this one. I've used some glue on the back there of this. Now I put quite a lot of glue down and then used my finger just to add a little bit onto that lacy part so it would also be adhered down nicely. Cut off the edges just a little bit because I have cut this down to be a card front. So it is now four by five and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to pop my little hedgehog on deciding which way around I wanted it to go. Um, that mushroom has quite a base to it. So if I remember, I'm going to cut that off in a minute. And I'm thinking about adding some extra little flowers or leaves down the bottom. But honestly, I quite like the simplicity of this one. Now these chipboard elements are pretty thick, but I just want to show you that you can really easily pull apart some of the layers. Now, because each one of these things has, each one of these chipboard has, I don't know, six or seven sort of layers. If you want to use a pokey tool to help you get in there, and then I just want to show you there are so many layers to this. And so I just pull off, pull off as many as you would like. You could pull off more and have it uh, definitely much uh, less than this. But I think this is a good amount. I do this a lot with the chipboard embellishments that I don't necessarily need to be chipboard or bulky, but I love the design elements. Uh, same with some of the Tim Holtz ephemera. You can pick off the second layer um, and then they become just beautiful thin elements that you can pop on your card. And of course, these have no white uh, surroundings on them, which I absolutely love uh, when it comes to card making, when there's no extra white space around these, which you often get when um, they are die cut out. Now, I almost forgot to cut this off, but I did add the glue and then I just cut down a little bit there, um, off there. And then I have this gorgeous big mushroom towering over this little hedgehog. And I really, really like this design. I'm going to cut off the extra little green and then a tiny little bit fell off and I thought, actually, that looks cute on the end there. So I'll add half of that back on and it just extends that little leaf out a little bit more. Now we are going to work on the envelope and this is super, super easy. Let me put this down on the card base first. Uh, the card base is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I'm just using the plain white uh, cardstock, the Frenchville brand from Spotlight here in New Zealand. That is 110 pound. Here is our sheet that we created earlier. I'm just going to roughly chop this, but we will be sort of cutting it down a little bit with a trimmer. Now, this is how I create my envelopes. <laughs> Not much actual measuring involved. So I put my card in and then whatever you do with all of these measurements, just make sure you give it a little more space. Because when I put my card in, you'll notice it's not tight to the bottom of the card and tight to the top of the card. I think that never ends up well for me when I try and make it too small or too tight. So then I cut it down to roughly the width and then I usually go half an inch on either side. I do a score line and I'm doing that here because these will fold in and create the sides of the envelope. I did uh, run the trimmer down that end to just to straighten the edge up. Then I do my scoring blade with the half an inch in. 
then I fold in each of the um, scores on either side and then all I do is I take my scissors, I take some long bladed scissors, I have the Tim Holtz ones but any are going to be handy and I trim off the excess up one side and then I sort of mitre the corner out like that and I do that on both sides, add some adhesive on those little flaps Make sure you add plenty. I tend to add a couple of strips up and down just so I get a good amount there. Then fold up your envelope and then these are just little bits and pieces you can do from here. Now I like to be able to grab, um, you know, grab the card a little bit more. So I'm actually going to cut in a little bit with my scissors so it kind of dips down. You should really do this before you close it up but you know I never remember to do all of those little things. And then yep the card fits in pretty well but it kind of disappears there a little bit so I'll fix that in a second. I cut off some of the top flap because it was uh, quite long so I just need a little bit less. And then all I do is fold over the flap, I round the corners of the envelope up the top. I am going to use a, I think it's a three quarter or a one inch um, punch. And I'm just going to pop a little notch in there so that you can get the card in and out much easier. I could have dipped it down a little bit lower as well, but honestly doing this, um, you know, works pretty well. And I just eyeball roughly where the center would be. And that way my card goes in much better and I can kind of have a little space to grab it. Then for when I'm going to send this, what I usually do is I usually cut out a rectangle and then I round the corners of it and I adhere it onto the front of the envelope so it gives me space to write the address. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.